Oh, welcome in the latest episode of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Michael Bratton. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And I'm joined, as always, by my cousin Shane, who goes by Big Orange Balls on Twitter. What are you up to, you big Tennessee homer? <laughs> hey, buddy, what's going on? Oh, man, I got to tell you. I am sure am thankful, Shane. We got this call line because we have hit the dead period here, <laughs> Shane. There's not much going on in the SEC post-spring football. But, yeah. again, thanks to the callers, we actually got some fun topics to to hit on here. I think we're going to have a really good show. Yeah, I think so too, man. And doing well over here. Uh, a little little better Morgan Wallen right now. I think I, at least I got my voice, you know. I mean, a lot of people coming out saying that those that didn't know Morgan Wallen was performing over there, apparently ghosted him right there at the end. A uh, big announcement comes up, says he's he's lost his voice. So, yeah. Uh, and I thought there's no way that Morgan Wallen would be faking an injury at Oxford Stadium. I mean, that does not <laughs> happen. <laughs> uh, they immediately, I thought of a tweet that Lane Kiffin put out when he was trolling the volunteer football, and I was like, I'm not saying they're related, but you know, you guys may want to burn them couches in honor of Lane Kiffin. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't even put it two and two together with the fake injuries, but, man, that's <laughs> – that's classic. Yeah. So oh, the ultimate try he's playing the Morgan was playing the long game here, you know? So, uh, kudos. He was one of the ones throwing mustard bottles. I heard. So I don't know. I don't yeah. know if that's true. I don't know. I don't know. Well, speaking of that, Shane, it's an interesting tie in, but before we get to our call in line here, we do have potential news here. This is kind of a, a big topic here. This was reported on Monday morning, Pat 40 sports illustrated, the SEC, Shane, they're considering new penalties for mm-hmm. fans that storm the field because, you know, obviously what they do is they find people. It's, I think it's 50 grand, 100 grand, then 250 grand per time they do it. Yeah. And they're concerned that uh, those fines are not a big enough punishment. So there's two being considered, Shane, and, and I think the biggest one has not even been – you know, people are kind of overlooking it, but the, you know, this went viral with the tweet suggesting that if fans storm the field, they could forfeit uh, a home game, so to speak. So Tennessee just beat Alabama. They do that maybe in the future. The next Alabama hosting Tennessee game could be at Alabama. So we're talking three straight trips to Tuscaloosa, potentially. That's what's being discussed. But how about this, Shane? This is even more asinine. They are considering, let, let's just use that Tennessee example again, when they beat Alabama, the fans storm the field. If you do that, they give Alabama the win. I mean, how ridiculous is this? That, that is the dumbest thing I have ever heard of, Mike. I mean, Mike, think about this. You're, you're taking an, an awesome experience that, I mean, the only one that got hurt was a Tennessee fan, you know, I think, that was storming the field, and that was by an Alabama receiver. That's all I've heard, <laughs> you know. That was I'm – now, I'm not saying that there wasn't some other injuries or anything like that, but what are we doing here? You know, it's asinine. It's, it's, it, it's taking the – you're taking – I don't know. You're just putting bumper guards on college football, and you're talking about vacating wins – changing yeah. home games that's the dumbest shit ever if you want to up the fines up the fines and it gets to a, per, uh, a certain extent i would imagine that these stadiums would do a, a little bit better with law enforcement around the outside of the or the inside of the stadium to prevent mm-hmm. people coming on the field there are probably ways that you can do it but to to just take it in your in your hand somebody somebody has had a great idea like we got to change something we got to do something this is a dude or a girl that needs to be relevant in their job and they came up with a dumb idea and now they're trying to push it through. Look what I did this offseason. I changed college football. You know, that's kind of what it feels like to me. 
and, and we don't need do-goers. Or, you know, we just we need people to just experience and because some of the greatest moments in college football history, you know, ended up with with fans on the field celebrating with the players. I mean, why why take all that away? We're talking hundreds and hundreds of years, and now we're going to say, "Well, we're not going to allow that to happen. We're going to vacate wins." That's that's the that's so stupid to me. And apparently, Shane, the uh, it, it's a working group is is what you'd call something like like a committee, and the people on the committee, Shane, this, this will mm. probably make you laugh as well. It's Alabama's AD, of course they get they get stormed on all the time. Georgia's yeah. AD, who they, they're terrified now, I guess if they lose on the road, they'll have they'll get. Fans storming on them. And Kentucky's AD, who apparently doesn't like it when they get basketball fans like- storming the court. So it's it's the three, you know, perceived most dominant programs here with uh, – it just – it kind of rings that, uh, the you know, they're almost like sore losers to where they don't want this taking place while they're on, on the field after a tough loss. You know what? Mike, you cannot have a committee that just represents three schools. That's That's where you're messing up to begin with. You know, this is an SEC. This this is a this is a network of fourteen, potentially sixteen. I think Texas and Oklahoma should definitely have a say so in this. And those teams are the those coaches, those players, those fans. Those are the ones that should decide, not three, and, mm-hmm. and not handpick three. You know what I'm saying? So, no, yep. this, you're changing everything you, because it's so hard when you change something to change it back. It's even harder sometimes to change something back when you made the mistake to put it back in the in the box as they say and and that's exactly what you're doing we it doesn't need to be changed but because it happened twice last year to Alabama now they want to create a ruckus and and make a scene and and change college football again for the worst in my opinion yeah it's about the it's about fans man I I I get it the players are playing this stuff but I mean, this is our lives, you know. We I talk my whole life has been circled around Tennessee football. You know, it's been at events I've been at. It's been part of you know conversations I have in the in the in the hallways. It is it is embedded in my life, and just like all the listeners here, that's what they know is this college football. And then you're taking something that 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 potentially you'll never get to experience again. I, I just it, it blows my mind. Yeah, and you know the only counterpoint, Shane. I agree everything you just said, but counterpoint, some kind of safety issue. I get it, but even at that point, Shane, could we not just simply say, and I don't know how they do this, but maybe just more police or whatever. But just you know, don't storm the field on Alabama side when when they're walking off the field. Let them come off the Tennessee side, and again, that I don't. I think that solves a lot of these potential issues you know what yeah i mean you know i mean how many lives are taken every year by nachos you know (laughs) by hot dogs our fat asses fighting that obesity you know but they still serving them you know they still serving that up ain't they they're still taking my money when i go up there and get me some calhoun's barbecue so yeah no i i think the the safety thing is is I get it, but I mean, we're talking about players that have shoulder yeah. pads and helmets. There's not yeah, a more yeah. secured. <laughs> you're talking about six six athletes that are 300 pounds. I should be afraid of them, not vice versa. They were scared. Yeah. They were scared. Oh, Trust scared me, to death. Were... Yeah, maybe little Nick Saban was, but you know, maybe storm him off. I mean, nobody got near him. Nobody punch, punched Papa. You know what I'm saying? They play. They had plenty of highway patrol around them. So yeah, this is this is crazy to me. All right, Shane. So uh, let's get into that hotline. We, again, we got these are backed up. We cannot thank enough all the uh, listeners. Let's get through a couple of these, and we'll. I guarantee you we got a lot more in the bank, but we could use them. So keep them coming. And that hotline number six one five nine six five five one five two. It's in the show notes. It's on the screen. One more time: six one five nine six five five one five two. Call into the show. And maybe you'll be featured on it, just like our boy here, TH, longtime listener. He wants to know about, uh, you know, the other side of the show, the business of the podcast and, and how listeners can help. Let's kick it over to TH for his question. Hey, Mike and Cousin Shane. What are you up to, you big SEC homers? This is, uh, this is your boy, TH, uh, longtime listener going back to 2019, but first time calling in. 
And I think the thing that has been on my mind recently is, you know, Mike, you quit your job a year ago to do this full time. And since then, from my perspective, you've really grown the brand. You know, your fine bombs, quote unquote, guest of the year. The YouTube channel is a ton of fun. And the show has just continued to exceed my expectations in terms of quality and execution. My question, though, is, you know, how are y'all doing? Like, how is the actual business going? Are you turning a profit? Uh, I mean, like, for example, like, how close is Cousin Shane quitting his job and joining the the show full-time? I guess y'all put so much work into the show, and, and we get so much entertainment and I just want to make sure it's it's paying off for you all. And and on that note, my my final question is, what can we do as listeners to financially support the show so you both can do this full time and forever? Uh, thanks again. Go dogs. All right, Chase. So not a football question necessarily, but we do appreciate it, Th. I figured you know fans probably. They obviously care about this stuff too. So off season, perfect time to dive into these topics. But yeah, I mean, business is good. I make more money now than I have at any other job. But of course, that's not saying much considering (laughs) some of the jobs and outlets I've worked for. But uh, yeah, things are going well on that side. The the viewership, the downloads, video views, everything continues to trend up. So we cannot thank y'all enough for uh, helping grow the show but as far as helping the show I mean I've I've always felt uncomfortable like asking people for money and I don't ever want to do that we've had several opportunities people have wanted us to come to networks and join patreon and and this and that to where there'd be a paywall and as long as I don't have to do that and I don't see why that would be but um, as long as I don't have to do that I'm not going to do it that's my promise I, I think there's a lot more value in it being free, bigger audience potentially. But if you really want to help the show, I mean, the main way is just spreading the word. That's going yeah. to help us more than anything. Anybody you know that loves football, loves SEC, uh, or just likes listening to Cousin Shane crack us up <laughs> each and every day, um, you really got to get the word out because that's going to grow the show more than anything else. Give us those five-star reviews. Subscribe like the videos and like i said there's spotify you can like us on and rate us on that as well we do also have a merchandise uh page and that is in the show notes and and i i'm wearing the shirt right now i wear these shirts all the time i actually found this company through another podcast i like the shirt so much so i got connected through them and we do make a small percentage i think it's like i think the shirts are 20 to 25 dollars let's say we make like three or four bucks per shirt so it's not like we're you know we're not charging fifty dollars and making 40 or anything like that so it's it's minimal but um i don't know what what any thoughts on that well my i I think you hit the nail on the head there it's 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 the word of mouth and that's how we've got to this point right here spreading this thing you know you you get on the twitters I, i i say this every now and then mike will post the show you know just you retweeting it maybe somebody in that in that thread saw a video that mike put up or an audio clip or something like that and just saying it uh, again I, I told you yesterday off you were on paul feinbaum but weren't on paul feinbaum you know you had a guest call in and, and was talking about that sec podcast you know so that that gets us out there it's just exposure and, and the more people we have more downloads we have that's that's just how this business works you know now obviously if you you're working at cores or something like that <laughs> uh, we'd definitely like to talk to you in the in, in, privately you know or something like that we would you know ultimately that's one of our goals is to be sponsored by by a beer you know network uh, you know there's some of them you know taking a few hits right now but <laughs> we're 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 open to those suggestions because we love drinking, man. <laughs> you know, that's we love drinking beer and, and talking college football. So yeah, if you got any sponsor offers or anything like that, be sure to send those to 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 Mike and, and he'll definitely vet those as well. So but right. other than that, man, just talking about it, you know. Right. And it, subscribing. You know, subscribe. You'd be amazed how many people aren't subscribed to all the stuff, you know. Jump on right. YouTube, hit subscribe. You don't have to watch them all. Just when you subscribe, that helps us out the more more subscriptions we have. That's a great point, Shane. We're on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube, Twitter, on and on and on. We got them all. 
you don't even have to view them all. Just just follow, su subscribe, like them. All that really does help, and it helps grow the brand. And and final thing, Shane. I mean, five, ten years ago, we would not have been able to pull this off. So no. we live in a great time to where you can put this stuff out there. And heck, you know, no disrespect to to any of these big networks, but if they offered me a job tomorrow, I'd probably say no because yeah. there's windows there. There's there's gatekeepers and. Hell, I don't like waking up before eight in the morning. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> I got it pretty good the way we got it. And we can say and do whatever we want. And yeah. we don't have to listen to anybody. And uh, that, that's because of you guys liking the show and, and continuing help to grow it. And uh, we've got something special in store for all you fans out there. We're still behind the scenes trying to get that worked out. And we'll reveal it here in the coming uh, uh, days and weeks ahead. But it, it's going to be a nice little thank you. And two on that note, my big picture, you know, we definitely see a future where me and Mike are in a studio setting where we're, we're sitting next to, you know, having guests and things like that. We're going to get there when we can get there. We're just not going to rush that process. And, uh, we just want to do it right. You know, sometimes it feels like I I've seen them, I've seen them pop up and, and then deflate, you know, it's just, we're, we're, we're building our brand, through through you guys and and we we mold the show with what you guys want to hear you know the only reason we created this thing mike was was just this is what we wanted to hear you know when i'm on a drive we didn't want to hear you know four hours of nonsense we wanted to get the sec news so uh so I don't know. That's that's my two cents. Maybe we should put Sarah McLaughlin in the background here. <laughs> you know, I could hold a puppy or something, and for for a small fee, you could <laughs> you could feed this fat bastard. <laughs> All right, how about this one, Shane, from Bobby Jones, big Arkansas fan. He wants to know about the SEC dark horses mm. heading into the season. Let's kick it over. To this uh, SEC hotline call from Bobby. Hi, this is Bobby Jones. I, I'm calling in from Northwest Arkansas, and I was just trying to get y'all's opinion on who you think the dark horse in both divisions of the SEC this season will be. I know we see Georgia, Tennessee in the East; those are the dominant teams there, and Alabama and LSU in the West. But who do you think the dark horse is? Because I think. Arkansas in the West, even though I'm an Arkansas fan, I think that that's unbiased. I think they have the best, potentially best QB in the entire conference. And in the East, I think it'd be South Carolina, and they have one of the best QBs in the conference as well. So I just wanted to get y'all's opinion on that. Um, there's plenty of viable teams for that dark horse spot or that third place spot in either division, but I think it's going to be South Carolina and uh, Arkansas. All right, Shane, so hey, Great, great question. We're not talking Georgia. We're not talking Tennessee. We're not talking Alabama. And we're not talking LSU. Now, right. certainly, we're, we're not – and it's not because we hate them or anything, but Bobby's specifically saying dark horses. I think those are your perceived favorites right now in the East and West, respectively. So, taking those four off the table, Shane, again, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, LSU. Mm-hmm. He's going Arkansas, South Carolina. I can see why he would go there. Would those be the top two on your mind? SEC dark horse out of the East and West. Arkansas, South Carolina. Um, you know, I could, I could see that, and, and I don't know. I feel like that's the the easy answer. The the yeah. for, you know because. You and I are both high on Arkansas. You and I are both high on South Carolina, probably more than most. Um, but when I'm thinking dark horse, man, I'm thinking about a team that comes from nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. when you talk LSU, we weren't saying this last year about LSU. They're they're a dark horse. They're a team that came from nowhere. So if if I'm picking a team to to be my dark horse from the east and from the west from the west mike you got to give me even though they hurt my feelings and crushed my soul and took my money but give me texas a&m man give me them aggies this this is a, a this is a team that is loaded with talent they just have not been able to put it together a lot of that you know is jimbo yes but some of that's two players sometimes you just get a bad class a bad crop of, of folks that comes through there and and i like to think 
that that the twelfth man is going to be back in, in full force this year. Um, I think that this. It, it, I don't know if it's Connor. I don't know if it's Max. But you know, we just need one of them to just step up, grab the reins, and be the guy that doesn't screw up. Because he does not have to win the games. He's got plenty of talent around him to do that for him. So, uh, Dark Horse out of the West, give me Texas A&M. Now, I I agree there's a lot to like about the Aggies. But again, Shane, kind of, maybe that's a fair. Because I don't think anybody's going to be picking A&M to win the West. Mm -hmm. But I do think there's going to be plenty of people saying what you just said and said, you know, there's potential there. So, I like that pick. But I got, I'm going to go something different just to be different here. I think the ultimate dark horse out of the West, Shane, is Ole, Ole Miss. With, mm-hmm. again, Lane Kiffin, I never know what to make of him. He's such a wild card. Uh, now they do play Georgia out of the East this year, so that's a significant roadblock <laughs> to, to this becoming a reality. But uh, if Jackson Dart really has taken that next step, Quinchon Junkins, he's just so dang good. They've added some receivers via the transfer portal i think the offense will be good again pete golding massive upgrade we do not need an elite defense we just need a not garbage defense (laughs) there in oxford (laughs) so for me i'll go with Ole miss as my west dark horse how about the east um bobby went with south carolina who are you thinking out of the east South Carolina is a good pick, Mike, and, and and it's one that I'm trying to convince myself is going to be really good this year. You know, I, I think they've got a lot of great things in their in their back pocket. You know, but there's still there's still some some lingering question marks. The schedule is tough as I mean, it's one of the toughest yeah. schedules in the country. You mm-hmm. know, so that's got to be a factor. When I think of Kentucky, that's why. I mean, you you got Alabama this year. You know, so the schedule. How can you not just say this isn't a typical Kentucky schedule? They got a tough road ahead of them. So this one may surprise you, man, and because you've already shit on them, give me Mizzou. I love. <laughs> <laughs> Mizzou here, and I'm going to tell you why. And this Wait, is what are you court. talking about? I shit on him. That was going to be my pick. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah. What are you doing? I was oh, hoping. Sorry. I was hoping you didn't mention every East team, but you managed to do it. <laughs> I did. I did. Well, I look at your helmets, you know, and then I yeah, start. Yeah. Oh well. I, I here's here's the thing. I love Kentucky. I really do. Yeah. I want to pick Kentucky, and I think that's expect where you were expecting me to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but it's it, the problem that I'm having with them is again. We've not seen it together. You know, that's why I'm a little high on South Carolina because at least we know what Rattler's bringing to the table. At least we know what Wells looks like when he's out there. At least we know what this, what Shane Beamer's offensive defense is going to look like. Mizzou is, is the, is the interesting one. It's the X factor. You know, it's the defense that I love. It's a schedule that I love. It's a, it's, it's, it's a quarterback that is the only one I have, uh, a, a, question on and if if cook comes out here i'm thinking he's the guy if he comes out here and he puts all this thing together which he did a little bit toward the tail end of last season i think a lot of people are sleeping on mizzou so uh dark horse yeah give me give me them give me them tigers yeah i think that's a perfect answer shane because that because the quarterback is a question mark so it makes them uh a dark horse so to speak exactly but Again, back to Bobby, South Carolina, I'll tell you this, Shane. If Spencer Rattler plays like he did against Tennessee, mm-hmm. that then they're the slam dunk answer. They, they Hell, they may even win the East. Right. As, cra- as crazy as that is to say, I'm certainly not suggesting we favor them over Georgia. But, hell, if he's throwing six touchdowns a game, how are you going to beat them? So my problem with Spencer Rattler, and I've always been a guy, Shane, that has talked him up and said he's – You know, a lot of people trash him. I've never trashed him. But it's fair to say he's been wildly inconsistent. Yeah. So I don't know that we're going to get that player. Now, it was at the offense, quite possibly. We certainly look to have upgraded (laughs) with uh, Dow Loggins bringing it. If if that can be an upgrade, if he fits better with this system, I'm fired up from a South Carolina fan because they will be in the mix. So I, I guess I'm talking both sides of my mouth here, but I like Missouri. I think that's the answer for Dark Horse. If Spencer Rattler is consistent all season long, South Carolina's going to surprise a lot of people this year. 
South Carolina is the one that's that's the scariest in, in my opinion, just because Mizzou, Mizzou, I think sleeps. I think they sneak up on some folks. South yeah. Carolina, you kind of expect them. I mean, when you watch the Tennessee game and the Clemson game last year, everybody knows what South Carolina is capable of doing. So maybe they're not overlooking them like they used to in years past. So I like South Carolina. I, again, it, it's which Rattler do we get? Do we get the end of the season Rattler? You know, what does he look like in this new system? You know, does he have a little bit more – you know, freedom. Uh, it, can he be more aggressive? Because it, it felt at times he was kind of balled up last year, but once let go, they were dangerous. Um, I love the. I love their secondary. I, I think this is a lockdown defense that that is going to be disruptive for a lot of folks that they face. So there's a lot of things to love about South Carolina and create them as that dark horse. But when I think dark horse, and this is why I picked Mizzou, I think of a team that came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Nobody is expecting Mizzou, and I'm telling you, they're closer than you think. All right, how about this one, Shane? I, you knew it was going to happen. Florida fans calling in, and this was a fun one. If I'm going to talk <laughs> trash, i got to be able to take it. Let's kick it over to Gator Josh, who wants to check on my mental well-being. Yeah, hi, this is uh, Gator Josh calling for uh, Mike. Hey, I just wanted to put a referral in for you to possibly see a psychiatrist or neurologist for some for the uh, horrible take on the Florida Gators uh, win totals for next season. I believe a couple weeks ago you said six wins. Now I know that the Gators weren't fantastic the last couple of years, but that defense is going to come and sneak up on some folks this year. I think they're going to jump up into the top thirty overall. Um, but I'm thinking the Gators at least get eight wins, possibly nine. Um, but I do want to. I do care about your health. Do care about your mental health and possible. Outside of that, love the show, Gator Josh zero one on Twitter. Have a great day. All right, hey, so thanks, Josh, for the question. I th- I thought that was a great one. But uh, hey, maybe he's right, Shane. And and heck, remember, I'm the idiot. I picked Florida second in the East last year. So maybe I just have a horrible read on the Gators, and they will exceed my expectations. But I don't think. I didn't want to go exactly because I don't want to spoil Shane. We're going to do our fall camp previews like we yeah. did last year. Fans loved it when we, when we we do each of the schedules optimistically. But let's do a version of that right now because Gator Josh, I mean, he's pretty bold. He said eight or nine wins for the Florida Gators this year. So let's look at the schedule through Gator Josh's eyes here. I got it pulled so up. So we're putting our optimistic hat on here, like the stars align. Or we're not doing the preview, right? You're. How about this, Mike? How about because he knows that you don't like the Florida Gators, right? Everybody knows that you just hate the Gators. <laughs> so what I would like, Mike, is I want you to convince me that Florida Gators get nine wins. How do they do it? Right. So I got the schedule here, and again, this is. I'm not. I'm trying to put on my optimistic hat here, right? Mm-hmm. Because we got to get to eight or nine. Uh huh. And you. You tell me how realistic this is. All right? So we open the season Utah at Utah. Yeah. Now, you whooped them last year. Anthony Richardson, he was a superhero. He won you the game. But at the end of the day, Shane, we don't have a ton of respect for Pac-12. I don't care how many yeah. championships Utah. Get so that garbage out of here. Let's give it to Let's give it to Florida. That's 1-0. McNeese State, I mean, that's don't all that needs to be at. said. Yeah. Don't even two know. 2-0. And, two and All right, Tennessee comes to town. Let's just say, and I don't think this is like some wild stretch, Shane. Let's say Tennessee was a one-hit wonder. Mm -hmm. Let's say without Hendon Hooker, without Jalen Hyatt, without Darnell Wright, this offense takes a big step back, which that's conceivable, right? And we all know that's been a house of horrors for the Vols, so let's give them that one. That's three wins. Charlotte, another one, that's four. At Kentucky... This is a little bit tricky. I mean, they've, they've had trouble with Kentucky, but Florida expects to beat Kentucky every year. So let's give them that one. That's five. These wins are racking up. I'll t- maybe <laughs> maybe Gator Josh is right. Vanderbilt at home. Help You lost to them last year, but we have to assume if you're beating Tennessee, if yeah. you're winning at Kentucky, you're beating Vanderbilt. So now we're at six. At South Carolina, a team you whipped the hell out of last year. Let's call it like it is. They're going to be out for revenge. And they whooped you two years ago in Columbia. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So I don't know what I don't know. Would you give that one at South? We just said it's a top five place, the to, toughest environment in the SEC. You giving that to the Gators? Hell no. I, no, no, the giving it to the Gators. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm being optimistic here, Mike. So mm. yes, I mean if you're gonna beat Tennessee, you're beating yeah. Kentucky. Why can't mm-hmm. you beat South Carolina? So uh, okay, yeah, okay. The we'll give them that there. one. Yeah, Georgia though, no, no chance, right? No, no. I, no. I, I love being optimistic, Mike. You know that, but <laughs> I, it's Georgia, you know. <laughs> right, right. All right, and then Arkansas at home. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess Kate. yeah. At, at home, I'll give you that. So that there's there's how we get to eight at LSU. I'm not giving you that one. At Missouri. Let's let's say at Missouri, Florida State. Of course, some people are saying Florida State's top ten. I ain't buying that. So let's give no. them one of the Missouri, Florida. State. Let's say they split that. There's their nine, baby. That's how you get to nine. Now everything I just said, Shane. To me, I mean, we had to every fifty-fifty game. You're winning. There's no issues. You're catching all the breaks. You're winning on the road. You're beating teams you struggle against. I mean, you tell me how realistic that what I just went through is. Well, it's – I mean, it's the SEC, Mike. I, I think it's very realistic. I mean, the people – if you're being optimistic, the first thing they're going to call that's out re- – You think that's realistic to beat all those teams after – you just lost no, no, to Vanderbilt, Kentucky, Mike, Tennessee. you're convincing me of the nine wins, and now here you are pulling off of it. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to figure out how these Gator Josh is saying, we could win nine games easy. Every break just went your way, and, and we struggled to get there. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's yeah, how I'm I seeing guess, it. Yeah, if you word it that way. But it's, <laughs> you got, I, I think obviously you're looking at Utah, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, you're, you're talking, these are going to be toss up games. We're going to convince each other that there's a shot. Like Florida and Tennessee, I don't think it really matters how good one team is compared to the other. They just play each other tough, and, and it's always right. a tight game. It helps it at home. So I could see that. But when I'm looking at breaking it down, I would say, okay, Tennessee and Kentucky, they win one of those. I could be convinced that they can win one of those. So, yeah, sure. the break, and, and just like you did with Missouri and Florida State, do they win? I think they win both of those. Like if, if I'm being mm. truly optimistic here that, you know, at the end of the season there's a shot – now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Now, let me pump the brakes a little bit. I just told you Mizzou's my dark horse team here. I'm and just saying those, it, if, those two will also be in two or three weeks they'll play if Georgia I'm, if and I'm, add LSU. That's a physical beating they're going to get in both those games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but everybody's had those beatings, you know. I mean, that's right. a, it's a tough – it's the SEC, you know. So, uh, I think we're all sore. And I, and I think – the only the only downside, my argument would be, is the depth. You know, I, is Florida going to have a tougher time than say Mizzou uh, mm-hmm. with depth? So I think they will. Uh, that's that's my biggest concern is is Florida can't. You you know you did best case scenario all the way to October seventh undefeated. They they got to hit the ground running because a couple key injuries. They're in trouble, man. You know, especially on that offensive line, um, I, I they just can't afford to to take any steps back. So, for for this to work, this is what I want to ask you, Mike. For this to work, for you you just went through an optimistic showcase here. Mm-hmm. What what needs to happen with with this football team, though? You know, what does, does, are we going to need a couple pl- players to just emerge from nowhere? Or are we gonna we gonna maybe over maybe uh, we didn't give enough credit to some of the players that are currently down there. Uh, the the development that Billy Napier and company have been able to do with the staff. What what has to happen going into twenty twenty three for that to even be a possibility? Well, we're going to need everybody on the same page, and that's yeah. always a issue with a new coaching staff inheriting players. Uh, I, I mean, it, I thought it was clear the the players Billy Napier brought in from Louisiana via the transfer portal, I mean, they were like the stars of the team. So they mm-hmm. buy, they buy into what Billy Napier is doing, and it worked for them, and it worked for a lot of the players. So, it, you know, it's not like Florida was horrible. Had they beaten Vanderbilt last year, I mean, they probably would have – you know, we would not even be doubting Billy Napier. But it yeah. just 
it kind of the wheels fell off there for whatever reason. And I think that is because not everybody was bought in. And yeah. it's easy to be bought in in fall camp, Shane. It's easy to be bought in when you beat Utah. And, my God, we, we got us a team. But then you lose to Kentucky at home and doubt creeps in. Yeah. So, and that's just one example. But, you know, we've got to get everybody on the same page. we got to get a lot of these younger players up to speed quickly because they are recruiting well. They've got a terrific freshman class coming in. Again, how many of those guys are going to be able to com- – they'll be able to compete probably the first couple of weeks when we're playing McNeese, when we're playing Charlotte, maybe even when we're playing Tennessee. But can they – at South Carolina, Georgia, Arkansas, at LSU, at Missouri, Florida State, are those young players going to be up for that? I, I mean, that's a big, big question. I think – and this – again, I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer here, Shane, but – I think a more realistic path, it's almost like a first year, as, as much as I hate to say that. What, what have we been selling with Hugh Freeze? You're probably not going to have a great record, but you could have a great close. And yeah. that's, that's what I'm looking at this if I'm Florida. You know, we'll throw everything we have at Georgia, but we'll probably lose. But, hell, maybe we pull off the upset of the season there. But even if we don't, we got Arkansas the next week. We do got at LSU, but the LSU will be coming off a game – at Alabama, Shane. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe LSU loses at Alabama. That's, you know, that's not a wild take by any means. And we have seen teams at LSU before, Shane. They lose that big game. They don't show up the next week. You're so right. you could steal that game. Could you beat Missouri? Hell yeah, you can beat Missouri. Florida State, we got no respect. So, I mean, I think three of the final four, four of the final four, you can win all those. I think that's the target for Billy Napier. Again, get these young players up to speed, yeah. finish strong, go to a bowl game, win that damn bowl game, and have a huge 2024. That's a realistic, optimistic outlook that I have for Florida. But all this, eight wins, nine, maybe nine wins. I mean, I don't know. We just lost to Vanderbilt. Why are we talking about <laughs> nine wins? You know what I mean? Like, let's let's pump the brakes a little bit here. I've been there, Mike. I've been there. <laughs> I've been Tennessee's been a ten win projection ever since Dooley was there for me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you do that. I mean, it's hard not to because you get excited about the the the, the freshmen that come in. You get excited about yep. your new recruiting class, new coaches. You convince yourself that that these guys are going to be a lot better than last year, and and then you know, then all of a sudden you get punched in the mouth by another sec team so we yep. all do it and i don't and he's no no different but i i do i appreciate you going through the games there and and uh who knows maybe we maybe we pick this maybe they're the dark horse maybe we yep. get to the end of the season a, a nine win season i'm saying mike what day was it that you said nine wins was crazy <laughs> you know so i'm sure he'll have it bookmarked for us so he'll let oh, us know yeah. when uh uh when that happens but that, that's the, the old, thing, old takes guy he's got me queued up you know what yeah, takes, you're, whatever that guy's you're name a favorite is. you're definitely <laughs> a favorite <laughs> All right, last one, Shane. We're running out of time here, but Cousin Eddie's got a question. Big Georgia Bulldog fan. Let's kick it over to him. Morning, fellas. This is Cousin Eddie down in Tampa, Florida, by way of Atlanta, Georgia. So, listen, I wanted to ask you guys, uh, so ranking Georgia number three, isn't that kind of like handing Coach Kirby Smart a loaded weapon? I mean – you know, he had them boys convinced that they were going to go six and six last year, if I remember correctly. And all of a sudden, that's like you're just you're just handing them bulletin board material. So, what do you guys think about that? Uh, and love the show. Interested in hearing your thoughts. Later. All right, Chase. So this is not a question that I thought before this football power BS came out. I didn't think you know there was any disrespect that Kirby and company can play. And I, I do think a lot of this is off-season narratives, and I don't know how much this really plays into effect, but I was stunned, Shane, after they won the last championship. They're sitting here saying they picked us to win seven games, and I'm like, are you talking about the first seven? Because I, I don't know where they were getting this, but whatever it was, yeah. they bought into it. And I think Georgia, after winning back-to-back titles, if you're Kirby, you are using anything and everything to your advantage. So, hell yeah. This is probably plastered all over the locker room and saying, yeah, I mean, they got Alabama over you. They got Ohio State over you. Two teams last time we played. Beat them both. 
yet yeah. we're not as good as them. Hell yeah, this this is this is exactly what Kirby wanted. It, well, he's always he's always one of those guys too that gets the absolute like the last drop of orange juice. You know, it's like he's going to get <laughs> everything he can, anything he can hang up in those locker rooms. He's going to do. Kind of yeah. reminds me, and I, I I think it was um uh oh what's his name Dan Mullen in mm-hmm. Mississippi State. If I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken, he had somebody drop flyers in before the Egg Bowl. About how Ole Miss was going to kick their ass, you know, <laughs> just just kind of creating that yeah. that that tension and and that animosity, making making that game more important because I think when you do that, you get more out of your players. So yes, anything and everything that Kirby can use to 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 get these kids fired up to play harder, to practice harder. You better mm-hmm. believe he's going to be using. He is texting their grandmas, you know, <laughs> trying to find some dirty baggage on them. You know, he is laying it out there. You remember, you remember your second grade teacher. He said you were worthless and you're never going to amount to anything. Do it for him, you know. So I, I, I think that's what Kirby's doing, man. He's, he's, a, he's a, an excellent manipulator. Yeah. So again, keep these questions coming. We're going to need them in the days and weeks to come during the off season. Six one five. Nine six five five one five two. It's in the show notes. Toll free, as Shane likes to say. Don't charge you a thing. <laughs> but uh, we really do appreciate these questions, and I appreciate you, Shane, for showing up. You got anything before we jump off the line? No, that's it, man. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. The Sarah. Well, I got a, I got a call coming in. in like okay. One minute. All right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Back in 1982. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding all right man uh nope brother that's it all right brother well i appreciate you appreciate each and every one of you we'll catch you on the next one all right see you guys go balls who's calling